who would who would give a gist uh, gist of this uh, poem so that we can discuss other important things yes akashita speak loudly speak loudly haan ji aur baki koi awaaz nahi aap sirf sunoge theek hai awaaz koi nahi haan ji yes so the poem on jennifer's tiger uh, there are three verses and the first verse describes us about the tiger uh, and over there we know about that he is so pow uh, powerful he is so uh, fearless that he doesn't even get scared of the people who are uh, under the shelter of the tree uh, and uh, his work is so heroic it's so beautiful and so magnificent uh, so magnificent. like ma majestic and so beautiful and the second verse uh, the we see a contrary over there we see aunt jennifer and we see that for her even ivory needle is very difficult to hold uh, and um, uh, over there we see the reason why it is very difficult to hold because of the ring uh that his uh, uh his husband has given to her uh and uh, the responsibilities that is beholden on her shoulder is so um, painful and so much difficult for her that it's very difficult for her to do things and the last uh, verse uh, describes us that even after she is dead uh, her responsibility her traumatic experience will never leave her uh, but the tiger will always roam freely and he'll be unafraid and he'll uh, always be the strong one yes yeah, so the, that's there are very sim uh, symbols here in this poem in the first stanza we have the symbol of tiger in the second one we have the second stanza we have that uncle's wedding band as the symbol and in the third stanza we have the old lady sewing which is aunt jennifer okay and even when she would die you know here in the third stanza we talked about a master slave relationship also like you have in circus and it, we are it, it says ringed with the audience she was mastered by so we here uh, the poet also talks about the master slave relationship in which uh, the domineering husband you know uh, doesn't let aunt have any of her identity okay she loses her identity and even after she dies she uh, would not be free because her mind would still be burdened with the audience that she was mastered by so we would discuss very important things and for that i need to share the screen up with symbols tigers mera aapko bata diya three senses there are three senses and three three senses that depict three different symbols teen alag alag symbols hai theek hai the tigers in the poem they symbolize freedom and confidence that seem unattainable to aunt jennifer in her real life aapko pata hai why is freedom unattainable to her because she feels throughout we see that she feels oppressed and suppressed she feels overburdened she feels as if uh, you know uh, she is under constant watch by whom by her husband okay so while the tigers are vibrant and they're bold they're described with powerful active verbs like prance and pace so these are very powerful words aunt jennifer is too weak to even handle her needle so she finds even the ivory needle very hard to pull while the tigers they live freely in a beautiful world of green Aunt Jennifer is stuck being a homemaker. While the tigers do not fear the men, Aunt Jennifer is totally in dread of her husband. She's totally scared of her husband. ठीक है ये है हमारा first symbol. Aunt Jennifer's innermost desires for freedom is thus expressed through the tigers. They are symbols of the liberated, joyous state of being of Aunt Jennifer. तो वो बनना चाहती है उसकी जो desire है वो कैसे depict करती है through her art and she immortalizes her art through the tigers that she embroiders okay the tigers represent not only of not only freedom from man made constraints like marriage in the tangible world but they also represent a unique freedom that no man or woman can hope to attain matlab freedom from death itself the final lines emphasize the tigers will go on otherwise you know if you look at tigers as tiger as an animal you know they are not immortal yahan pe immortalize kaise kiya kyunki ye art work hai so the tigers in that panel they will go on even after aunt jennifer's death theek hai they will go on prancing they will go on roaming freely since the tigers are inanimate they are captured with a tapestry they can theoretically exist forever wo to hamesha reh sakte hai na एम्ब्रॉयडरी तो हमेशा रह सकती है वो पैनल हमेशा रह सकते हैं ठीक है एज अ सिंबल ऑफ इमोटेलिटी दे हाईलाइट द फैक्ट दैट इवन मेन 
who might try to rule the world through patriarchal institutions like marriage are not all powerful. They are all fallible and none of them will exist forever. But who will exist? The tigers. The tigers. Okay? The embroidery, the panel, the tigers in that panel. Okay. The tree is also a symbol. The tree in line 3 can be seen to symbolize one of two things. One reading of the tree can see it simply as a symbol of the natural world. If you see line 3 in the tree, they do not fear the men beneath the tree. Okay? This can be two different interpretations. What is the tree? It can simply be seen as a symbol of the natural world. Okay? This single tree is a small representation of the larger forest, the world of green. Okay, what is the world of green? What is the forest? What is the forest? What is the forest? Okay, so a single tree represents the world of green that the tigers presumably inhabit. The men referred to here might, in this case, be hunters. Okay, who are hunters? Who are in the forest? Who are in the forest? Hunters who are tired and taking rest, okay, so they can represent them. Okay, positioning the men beneath the tree suggests a power hierarchy, namely the natural world will always prevail over the mechanizations of men. What do you mean by this line? Men beneath the tree means that there is a power hierarchy, it means that the natural world will always remain above human beings. Okay, that is why the men are beneath the tree. ये समझ आ रही है आपको ऑनलाइन स्टूडेंट्स? Yes ma'am. ठीक है? Yes ma'am. Natural world is all would always be above us. It would always be superior. ठीक है? Indeed, certain species of animals and trees live much longer than humans. आपको पता ही है? कुछ स्पीशीज होते हैं ट्रीज के भी कुछ थाउजेंड डेज तक भी रहते हैं. ठीक है? ये वैसे भी है प्रैक्टिकली. This reading lies in with the view of the tigers as a symbol of freedom from the mortal world. Since the tigers are technically inanimate, कौन से tigers की बात कर रहे हैं? Which tigers? Which she is embroidering? Captured as part of an artwork that literally cannot die. They will outlive Aunt Jennifer. They will outlive Uncle. They will outlive any human institution like marriage. ठीक है? On that panel, on that tapestry. Another reading of the tree is that it is a reference to the tree. It is an allusion to the biblical tree of knowledge of good and evil. ये भी आप याद कर सकते हो, ठीक है? I'm going to share this with you people. तो इसको भी आप याद रख लो। तो दो हमने tree के interpretations करे। एक तो natural world है, ठीक है? The the world of forest of which the tigers are inhabitants. एक इसमें किसको reference है? To the biblical tree of knowledge of good and evil. In Genesis, when Eve ate fruit from the tree at the urging of the serpent. The fall of man resulted. ये तो आपने Adam and Eve का पढ़ा ही हुआ सब में, ठीक है? Human beings were cast out of paradise, and shame and sin were introduced into the world. Eve was subsequently marked as weak. Since why was she marked as weak? Because she gave in to the serpent's temptation, while Adam did not. ठीक है? So at the same time, the biblical tree is associated with free will and deviation from a higher power. Thinking of the tree as a symbol for the tree of knowledge thus speaks to the theme of female subordination within traditional male-female relationships like whereas in her real life Aunt Jennifer is treated as subservient. What do you understand by subservient? Ka matlab kya hota hai? What is subservient? She's serving. She's serving, yes. She is, uh, you know, subordinate. Subordinate. Subordinate to someone, she is serving someone. She is subservient to her husband. In the tapestry, it is men who are beneath. Means men are subservient to the tree. Okay, we have learned that natural world is much more superior than the mortal world. Okay, and to the tigers that Jennifer has created. Now, I have told you another symbol, a wedding band. Which we read in the second stanza. In the first stanza, we have two symbols. What do we read? Tigers and the tree. ठीक है अब second stanza में कौन सा symbol आता है? The wedding band. The wedding band is a symbol of the institution of marriage and online students am I audible to you? In band is a symbol of the institution of marriage and speaks about the poem's broader thematic ideas surrounding marriage, gender and power. The depiction of the ring as burdensome. हम ये कहाँ पे क्या बोल रहे हैं? ये line क्या है बेटे? The massive weight. तो अगर हम wedding band को एक burdensome चीज की तरह ले रहे हैं so the depiction of this ring as burdensome, it speaks about power dynamics of a traditional marriage which serves to oppress women. That is why it is said uncle's wedding band. 
ठीक है अंकल्स वेडिंग उसमें कुछ भी म्यूचुअल नहीं है ठीक है इट इज अंकल्स वेडिंग बैंड द वे दैट द बैंड इज डिस्क्राइब्ड इन लाइन सेवन एंड एट आई लाइक दिस एज द बैंड इज डिस्क्राइब्ड एज सिटिंग हेविली ऑन आन जेनिफर्स हैंड एज इफ इट इज वेइंग हर डाउन इट्स ऑल्सो एट्रीब्यूटेड विद अ मैसिव वेट अ बिट ऑफ हाइपर बोल एंड वॉट इज हाइपर बोल मतलब एग्जैजरेशन टू एग्जैजरेट थिंग्स जब आप एग्जैजरेट करते हो कुछ चीज़ों को जरूरत से ज्यादा ठीक है मैसे वेट एक वेडिंग बैंड का वेट कितना हो सकता है वैसे ठीक है अगर हम लिटरली देखें तो कुछ भी नहीं है ठीक है बट इट इज हाइपर बोल इट इज काइंड ऑफ एग्जैजरेशन दैट कन्फर्म्स द रीडर सस्पिशन दैट इट इज नॉट द रिंग इट सेल्फ दैट बर्डन आर जेनेफर बट वॉट द रिंग रिप्रेजेंट रिंग बर्डन हम नहीं है पर रिंग किस को रिप्रेजेंट कर रही है इट इज रिप्रेजेंटिंग द बॉन्ड दैट शी इज हैविंग विद हजबेंड द मैरिज सो दैट इज बर्डन सम Or not the ring, ठीक है? What it? The fact that it is uncle's wedding band it affirms this interpretation, making it clear that the man holds the power in the relationship, leaving aunt in the subservient, slave kind of a role, ठीक है? समझ गए? The reference to the symbol of the wedding band in lines nine and ten further supports this view. Face जो है ringed with ordeal she was mastered by is a nod to the previously Mentioned ring. Nod का मतलब क्या है यहाँ पे इट इज अड मीन्स नॉट से ना वाला नहीं हाँ वाला इट इज अड टू द प्रीवियसली मैं रिंग ठीक है प्रीवियसली मैं रिंग द यूज ऑफ द वर्ड मास्टर्ड इन दिस इंस्टेंस अगेन पेंट्स अ पिक्चर ऑफ आर जेनिफर एज बींग इन दिस सब सर्वेंट रोल ये हमने पढ़ लिया ठीक है Ordeal she was mastered by the slave to which master uncle. Okay, she said. Uh, she says the um, ringed with ordeal she was mastered by. Mastered by का मतलब क्या है? She was mastered by means that she is slave, the she master slave to her, to her husband. So this is a, this is again talking about the master slave relationship. ठीक है जैसे मैंने आपको बताया सर्कस में एक ring master control करता है तभी ring बोला ना she ringed with the ordeals. ये उसको भी आप अल्यूजन का भी रेफरेंस दे सकते हैं कंपैरिजन कर सकते हैं ठीक है वॉट इट अ परसोनिफिकेशन यहाँ पे क्या है टाइगर्स आर परसोनिफाइड थ्रू आउट द पोम वेन दे आर डिस्क्राइब एज बींग प्राउड कॉन्फिडेंट एंड अनफ्रेड ऑफ मेन दीज क्वालिटीज डिफ्रेंशिएट दैम फ्रॉम द फेयरफुल एंड टिमिड आर जेनिफर द मोस्ट स्ट्राइकिंग इंस्टेंस ऑफ परसोनिफिकेशन हाउ एवर इज वेन दे आर रेफर टू अवेलरिक शिवलरिक ह्यूमन बींग्स होते हैं ना ठीक है जो हेरोइक रिलेटेड टू नाइट हुड रिप्रेजेंट करते हैं नाइट हुड रिप्रेजेंट करते हैं तो ये हम हम शिवलरिक सर्टेंटी किसके लिए यूज कर रहे हैं एक एनिमल के लिए यूज कर रहे हैं तो दिस इज द मोस्ट स्ट्राइकिंग सिंबल ऑफ इंस्टेंस ऑफ परसोनिफिकेशन ओके दिस टर्म इज ट्रेडिशनली एसोसिएटेड विद मिडीवल नाइट अभी मैंने आपको यही बताया था नाइट हुड देर एक्सपेक्टेड टू अडेयर to a strict moral code known as chivalry such men might be described as chivalric or chivalrous in modern usage chivalry is typically used to describe courteous oh, yeah. treatment towards women agar main bolti hu that this and this uh, man is chivalric or chivalrous means that he is very gentle he is very kind he is very courteous towards women theek hai to yahan pe humne use kiya hai kiske liye with tigers to ye kya hai personification when an inanimate thing is given the uh, traits attributes of a human human characteristics traits dete hain hum to uske liye kya hota hai wo kya uh, literary oh, device hota hai personification ek human being ki chahe living being hai uh, animal wo par wo human nahi hai na to jo human traits hum kisi animal ko ya non living thing ko dete hain to wo kya hai kaun si poetic device hai personification theek hai ye samajh aa gaya aapko it's unusual to apply this term to an animal and in doing so the poem associates the tigers with male figures their bravery their confidence is thus aligned with masculinity that is being certain and proud is directly linked to a specific idea of man manhood theek hai na personification aapko agar explain karne ko aaye to yahi hai theek hai they are proud they are certain they are chivalrous to ye sare unke kaun se characteristics hain of manhood theek hai This further highlights the contrast between animals and Aunt Jennifer herself. The fearful woman depicted engaging in a traditionally female pastime of needlework. 
ठीक है ये ये नीडल वर्क लेडीज ही करती है जो ट्रेडिशनल पास टाइम किंग का है ये लेडीज के लिए ठीक है स्टक इन अ पिट्रियार्कल इंस्टीट्यूशन दैट डी ह्यूमनाइज हर कैसे बाय पोजीशनिंग हर एज एन ऑब्जेक्ट टू बी ओन ठीक है एंड ऑपरेस हर आंट जेनिफर इज अनेबल टू शेयर द सेम प्राइड एंड ब्रेवरी ऑफ द टाइगर्स शी कान प्रांस इन सेम केयर फ्री मैनर दैट दे डू नॉर कैन शी शेयर द लैक ऑफ फियर इन द फेस ऑफ मैन तो टाइगर्स जैसे वो बिल्कुल नहीं है वो बिल्कुल उनके ऑपोजिट है बिल्कुल कंट्रास्ट है आंट जेनिफर और टाइगर ठीक है ना तो वो उनकी तरह घूम सकती है ना ही वो एज दे आर अन अफ्रेड ऑफ दे डोंट फियर द मैन बट शी इज अफ्रेड ऑफ द मेन मैन इन अर लाइफ दैट इज हर हजबेंड ठीक है इमेजरी क्या होती है बेटा वॉट इज इमेजरी पहले तो ये बताओ इमेजरी मैं आपको समझाऊंगी बाद में बट फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल एक्सप्लेन वॉट इज इमेजरी आप लाइन्स फॉर्म की पढ़ते हो ठीक है एंड यू विजुअलाइज दो इन योर माइंड आपके दिमाग में एक इमेज बन जाती है सो दैट इज इमेज ठीक है हाँ ठीक है सो द मेन इमेज ऑफ आर ऑफ आर जेनिफर एज अ फ्यूरफुल वाइफ and secondly the magnificent tigers she creates in her panel images of precious substances run through the poem are topaz aap so so bright topaz denizens topaz aapke dimag mein ekdam se wo bright yellow color aa jata hai theek hai ivory jab ivory aap padhte ho to aapke dimag mein wo elephant tusks aa jate hain theek hai and the gold of wedding band wedding band padhte ho to aapko yaad aata hai diamond ya gold jaise rings hote hain theek hai to ye images ban jati hain aapki automatically aapke dimag mein metaphor the poem compares the yellow stripes of the tigers to a precious stone that is topaz theek hai hyperbole humne abhi padha padha tha exaggeration jab aap koi cheez ko bahut bada chada ke bolte ho theek hai that is hyperbole the poem poet exaggerates the weight of aunt jennifer's husband wedding ring to make a point about how dominating usne kyu bola massive weight of uncle's wedding band humne kya bola ki wo ring massive nahi hai but what it is representing and it what is it representing it is representing the marriage you know in which uh, the wife has no say she can't even voice her opinion she, she has lost her identity to ye exaggeration hai ye wedding ring ko massive weight jo kehna ye kya hai hyperbole hai to aapse poetic devices puche jayenge to aap ye bata sakte ho beta theek hai ji ye sab samajh mein aa gaya kuch aur puchna to nahi aapne yahan pe is poem mein se okay ab ek aur uh, screen share kar rahi hu i'm just sharing an assignment so that we can discuss it. Read the extracts and answer the questions. Aunt Jennifer's tiger prances across the screen, rides to pass the denizens of a world of green. They do not fear the men beneath the tree. They pace in sleek chivalric certainty. Aunt Jennifer's tigers are actually. Wow, what a question! What are Aunt Jennifer's tigers? They are actually embroidered. Option C, embroidered tigers. ठीक है, ठीक है जी. Bengal tigers नहीं है वो. <laughs> yeah. the poet describes the color of the tigers as brown white orange topaz topaz theek hai topaz bahut simple se question hai ye to denizens of a world of green means what kya matlab hai iska residents of forests yes residents of forests b the tigers are not afraid of men the men the men theek hai Aunt Jennifer's fingers fluttering through her wool find even the ivory needle hard to pull. The massive weight of Uncle's wedding band sits heavily upon Aunt Jennifer's hand. What is she doing with the wool? Yes, she is embroidering a wall panel. D. What do her fluttering fingers find hard to do? To pull the ivory needle. वो A है पर उसमें the का he बना दिया वो the आएगा. The massive weight of Uncle's wedding band is a subtle reference to what? No. The precious aftermath of her husband. हाँ हाँ जी online students बताओ. Even at the hands of her husband. Next literary device used in fingers fluttering. बताएँ सबको. What is the literary device used here? A literary. हाँ ठीक. When Aunt is dead, her uh, dead, her terrified hands will lie. Still ringed with the audience, he was mastered by the tigers in the panel that she made will go on prancing round and unafraid. Audience means what? Uh, 
हार्डशिप्स बेटा हार्डशिप ऑडियंस वैसे भी डिफिकल्टीज होता है ऑब्स्टिकल्स डिफिकल्टीज तो सिंपल वर्ड है इवन इफ यू नॉट रेड द पोम ऑडियंस हार्डशिप्स स्टिल रिंग मींस व्हाट डू यू मीन बाय स्टिल रिंग ऑपरेशन विल कंटिन्यू वी होप दैट वी वी गेट सच काइंड ऑफ क्वेश्चंस इन द एग्जाम proud and unafraid are the adjectives used for what on the panel tigers on the panel tigers on the panel will go on prancing means what what do you mean by will go on prancing the spirit of freedom of the tigers will continue to exist online students option b yes आंसर द फॉलोइंग सिंबलाइज इन द पोम द ट्री हां जी आज ही पढ़ाया मैंने बताओ जी चलो अब मुझे आकर्षिता नहीं चाहिए मतलब मुझे चाहिए आकर्षिता पर आंसर आकर्षिता नहीं देंगे नहीं है बच्चे और देयर इज तुषिता देयर इज आरंदर देयर इज नकुल महक और मैं ये नहीं कह रही है और भी बच्चे जो कभी-कभी आंसर देते हैं मुझे पर हमेशा नहीं है ना बताओ व्हाट आर द फॉलोइंग सिंबलाइज द ट्री हां बताओ यस महक देयर आर टू इंटरप्रिटेशंस टू दिस वन इज अ about the uh, first one is about the nature where it is said uh, even in nature we have two uh, interpretation that one is related to the references where it is said that a tree uh, where uh, the reference is made to a tree of knowledge and the yes. other one is of the uh, of the nature natural world that man will always be always be under the under the tree so natural world is far far superior नेचुरल वर्ल्ड इज फार सुपीरियर दैन दी मॉटल वर्ल्ड दैन दी वर्ल्ड ऑफ ह्यूमन बींग्स ठीक है तो हमने आज ही पढ़ा है टाइगर्स बताओ अब ऑनलाइन स्टूडेंट्स बताएंगे टाइगर्स वॉट इज द रेफरेंस टू टाइगर्स बताओ ऑनलाइन स्टूडेंट्स स्ट्रेंथ फ्रीडम ठीक है फ्रीडम करेज स्ट्रेंथ पावर वेडिंग प्राइड हाँ जी वेडिंग बैंड किसका सिंबॉलिक है भाई बताओ वेडिंग बैंड इज सिंबॉलिक ऑफ वॉट वेरी गुड Why do you think Aunt Jennifer created animals that are so different from her own character? अपने character से इतने ज़्यादा अलग क्यों बनाएं उसे? Uh, Ma'am, Aunt Jennifer creates animals that are uh, tigers, which are so different from her because she is in a marriage where she is suppressed. She is not given any freedom. She doesn't have any uh, opinion or to express. She can't express. So what she desires, जो मतलब Ma'am, what? Yes, whatever what she craves heart. for, whatever she desires, uh, she wants to represent Jennifer her inherent heart. spirit. to her art theek okay? hai so it is her desire to for freedom you know which she wants to depict through her art aunt jennifer efforts to get rid of her fear prove to be futile futile comment why did her efforts prove to be futile very simple question yes sakarthita ha and through her Through, through this poem, the evidence is there in the poem itself that even after her death, her terrified hands. This is the uh, you know uh, the solid, the concrete evidence that we get that how uh, her efforts proved to be futile. That her hands would still be terrified even after her death. She would uh, they would still be ringed with the audience that controlled, that mastered her all life. The to the yes, all the courage. That she wants in her life, it is limited only to 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 her art. Okay, so this is not going to change her condition at all. Next, why did Aunt Jennifer find the needle so hard to pull? We have discussed it so many times. No, because of that mental operation. You know the mental uh, fear. It was more than the physical torture. It was the mental trauma that she was going through. So. Because of that, she was trembling. Her hands were burning. What is suggested by the uh, image masturbate of Uncle's wedding band? We've discussed this so many times. So we would discuss only those that we have not discussed already. What is the predominant theme in the poem? Predominant theme, what is it? Tell me. Predominant theme. So, I mean, what is the main theme? What is it? Basically, about patriarchy. It is basically about male chauvinism. It is about male dominance. It is about gender. It is about gender conflicts. 
it is about the victimization of objectification, so objectification. The yes. Of yes it is the reality of the society that comes to the to aunt jennifer what will happen to aunt jennifer's tigers when she is dead they will remain free they will keep on yes they are immortalized in the form of an heart yes good so this is all about this poem that's hindi's uh, assignment plus you know the textbook questions